I would go in and meet with Dr. Holdridge periodically because he was the most knowledgeable person about tree identifications there. And I would talk to him about the future and I was beginning to have doubts because of rampant deforestation, the huge unanswered questions about tropical rainforests. I wasn't sure I wanted to do it from a U.S. academic institution. Yeah. And I broached this to, to Dr. Holdridge and, and we were talking about the future and opportunities and so forth and he said to me, here, you want to go to Peru? And I read this cable from FAO and asking him to go to Peru and teach dendrology, the field identification of trees. And he, he had commitments, he couldn't do it, but he asked me if I would be interested to do it. And I said, you think I can do this? I've never been in Peru. He said, yeah, you can do it, you know, teaching his system of dendrology. And uh, so I did it, and that led to my affiliation with the Tropical Science Center for about 15 years of act, active participation. Uh, Dr. Holdridge was the, he bought La Selva, called it Finca La Selva in 1953 and sold it to OTS in 1968 so for the launch of the Comparative Ecosystem uh, Research Project. That, that's how I got involved with, with that. But yes, he talked a lot about the history of La Selva, about tree species, about uh, land use pressures uh, in, in that area. Pretty visionary guy. He wanted to make it a working forest. So on the upper terrace, he planted Peibaya. He tried rubber, which mostly failed and so forth. But the cacao and the Peibaya seemed to work. And there was a lemon grove there as well, where the new laboratories are now. So it's changed phenomenally. But he had a vision for it. And at least he protected the old growth forest uh, in the back of La Selva. So I think that's valuable.